So I'm so happy uh, that you guys are all here today. Good morning and welcome to Dobbins Memorial United Methodist Church. I am Pastor Waleska Trinidad, and I have the privilege to serve here and, and to join all of you in worship. You guys are amazing and awesome. I don't know if I always, you know, I always said that, but it's because you guys are. You guys are so amazing. And you guys are so, um, such an amazing group of people that when I am with you, then I feel that I'm amazing too. <laughs> so what, what great feeling is that one, right? That we can all be amazing, that we can all belong to the same body, to the same family, that we can all be claimed and be chosen, right? Amen? Amen? Amen, right? We are all chosen by God. We were all invited to this place. We were all connected with the Holy Spirit in order to be here in this time, at this moment, this morning. And for those that are worshiping with us um, online, please remember to go to our website, dovinschurch.org, and complete the check-in card. Um, if you're worshiping on Facebook, like our page and also leave a comment so we know that you were uh, with us. Um, and you know what? I, I am grateful, but the leadership in this church, it's super, super, super grateful. Every time the, the leaders meet, we see God's grace and God's hand at work, but we also see your commitment. And I want to acknowledge that because for the past 18, 19 months now, I, I even lost count. It's been, it, it's been tough. It's been tough. It's been different. It's been tougher for some people than for others. It's been weird. Let's name it, right? It's been weird. It's weird, right? It's been weird. But you know what? Even though that we are living in weird times, in weird moments, as a body of Christ, as a people of Christ, we have showed up. And we continue to bless our community and we continue to share the good news of Jesus Christ. And, and because of you and because your gift, it's, it, this is possible. If it was not because your support, we will not be able to be here. We will not be able to reach out to our community to have kids um, and, 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 and give them um, school supplies or to have the youth group here in order to shine the light of Jesus in their lives. If it was not because of you, we will not be able to feed the people that are hungry. We will not be able to dress those that are naked. We will not be able to reach out those that are sick. And it's because of you that we're able to do that. So thank you. Thank you so much. And if you want to be part of all this and everything that God is doing and God will continue to do, I invite you to go to the website at dobbinschurch.org. Click on the give button. It's easy and secure. And for those that are here and they don't, you guys don't know how to do it electronically or you prefer not to do it electronically, there's no excuse, not a problem. We have the offering plates at the end, and when you go out, you can leave your gift and your offering so we can continue to bless others. And may God bless you and continue to bless you abundantly so you can continue to share with others not only your gift, but also the love and the grace of Jesus Christ. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Amen. I just came from vacation, so I don't know if you noticed, but... <laughs> I just came from vacation. I'm so excited to be here. But I always have a couple of announcements, and I'm going to try to make it quick because I want to worship. So today is communion day. For, for those that are at home, if you don't have your elements with you, this is the time to go grab some juice, some uh, crackers. Um, please don't post your pictures of coffee and donut because we're here, and I don't have that. And uh, people are starting to complain. So, <laughs> so you have uh, cookies and donuts, um, enjoy them, I bless them, but um, don't put them on, on online because it makes us feel bad, the ones that are here eating juice, uh, juice and bread. Um, so after the service, we'll be having a gathering for all the uh, VBS volunteers that help us out um, with this amazing VBS that we just have. So, um, all are welcome to go participate with us. We have amazing news that we want to share with you. 
and uh, the vision that God is taking us uh, with the kids ministry in our church. So we are all invited to be there, spend a little bit um, some time giving thanks to the ones that work, um, enjoying a light lunch and listening to good news. You know what, that, that's something that I will sign up for that definitely. And uh, last but not least, let me see. Oh yeah, last but not least, um, this month we have our last um, gathering for Reunited. You know that every month on the third Sunday, right? No, second, third? Okay. Uh, one Sunday of each month, <laughs> I think it's the third Sunday, we meet here in the afternoon and we have an afternoon of worship, prayer, testimonies. And, and it's been awesome and it's been great. Uh, the last couple of months has been like really, really good. And this month is going to be the last one for this year. So I invite you to come. And not only because we're going to have an amazing time of worship and we're going to have prayer and testimonies, but because we're going to be celebrating Lady Sunday. Because it's because of you that the church keep going. Because it's because all of you together that we form the body of Christ. You know, a church with a pastor is not a church if you guys are not here. If you guys are not here to learn, to receive the grace of God and the message of God and then go out. So thank you so much. But that day we will be thanking you for that. So uh, put it on your calendar. October 17 at 7 p.m. We will be here worshiping the Lord and celebrating all of you. Amen? Oh, I forgot the snacks. Oh, yes. Um, we're going to have like a little potluck. So uh, we're going to be celebrating your work. So we're going to put you to work, right? Because that, <laughs> what better way to celebrate your work than that? So um, if you want to make like just like a simple appetizer for us to share, um, can you contact Barb? And Barb is going to have a list of people that, um, you know, that they're going to kind of like uh, sign up for it. And if you're watching us online and you want to sign up for it, there is a form on the bulletin. If you go to our website, there's a form in the bulletin that you can sign up for that. Okay, so I think that uh, we are all with the announcements. So now let's get ready. Let us prepare ourselves, our hearts and minds and spirit for worship, for what we have come here today to do. Let us pray. Amazing and loving God. I give you thanks for this, for your presence in this place. I give you thanks for, for the opportunity to come, to gather together in one spirit to worship you. God, thank you because your Holy Spirit, it's in here. Thank you because your Holy Spirit is ready and willing to bless us. So I ask you that you prepare our hearts and our minds to receive your word, to receive your message through the prayers, through the scripture, through the message, through the elements of communion. God, thank you for the privilege to be called your people. Thank you, God, for technology because we can connect and gather this way. Thank you, God, because maybe some of us, when we got up, we were not sure if we were coming or not. But your Holy Spirit moved in us. And some of us dragged us here. And thank you for that. We praise you for that. Because we know that you have something special. God, your people is asking for something special. God, your people have come to see something special. God, we want you to move in this place. We want to be transformed. We want to be healed. We want to be renewed. God, we're tired. God, we're overwhelmed. Some of us are sad. Some of us are anxious. But we have come here to receive your peace. The peace that surpassed all understanding. The peace that the world cannot give us. Only you can give us. Please, Holy Spirit, surround us with your peace as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us worship. Jesus said, whenever two or more of you are gathered together, there will I be also. So I say, surely the presence of God is in this place this morning. Amen. Letting 
go of every single tree I lay each one down at your feet Every moment of my wandering Never changes what you see I try to win this war
Amen, amen. Scripture today is from Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of the fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. Today we start a new sermon series called All In. Um, I kind of like give you a preview last week, and uh, um, if you guys are connected on social media, you have been seeing some messages that we have been putting on social media about it. And it's because in life, we constantly face an important decisions and new opportunities, right? Like, like starting a new career or, or a relationship or trying something new for the first time, or a new season in life, right? And when those times arrive, we often weigh the pros and the cons, right? We, we look at it. And, and we have to decide if we are going to continue to find reasons to avoid the change or to keep doing the things that you know, we have always done the same old way, or if we are going to go all in. You know, I have been a pastor for eight years, and now that I kind of like say it kind of like it's like, wow, eight years. But out of the eight years, for six years, I was a bivocational pastor. What that means is that I had a secular job, and also I had um, the church. So I was working full-time for a nonprofit organization, what I was also serving as a pastor in two churches. And for a while, I have to admit that for a while, this was kind of like the best of both worlds to me. I was finally, finally, finally able to answer my calling to ministry. And having also the safety net of a job security and benefits. You know, but, but I also have to admit that as the time went by and years started to kind of like, you know, accumulate. And, and more responsibilities started coming my way. I started to feel exhausted. I was really, really tired. I was really, really exhausted. I thought that I was getting very close to the point of being burned out. So I started counting and contemplating my losses, right? I, I started to looking at what I was doing. And I started to think about that maybe with time, to go back to the shore and clean my nets. I think that it was getting to a point in my life that the exhaustion 
was too much for me to bear for longer. And I don't know if in your life you have uh, found yourself in situations like that, not necessarily in a job, but sometimes our health, sometimes uh, taking care of our parents, or sometimes taking care of our kids, sometimes situations at home, situations in our community, po tensions, political tensions, just society. Sometimes we are just kind of like, I just don't even want to watch the news anymore, right? Like sometimes we just can't, sometimes we just can't stand it no more. But after Jesus finished uh, his teachings, he turns around and asks to attire and discourage Simon to go back to the deep waters and let the, down the nets. You know, I'm, I'm sure that these words were a test and a risk for Simon. Simon was experienced, he was an experienced fisherman. He knew where to go to catch fish, right? He knew at what time. He knew when the tide was the perfect to do that. He knew the season. He knew that they just went out and didn't cut anything. He knew that he was a good fisherman. That was his, his that was, that was his, his, uh, what, what he was doing. That was his profession. He was doing well. He was a fisherman. He knew what he was doing, or at least he thought he knew. And then on top of that, he was out with his crew, because I'm pretty sure that he was not alone. Those um, nets are very long and very heavy. And I'm sure, I'm sure that they were also disappointed. I am sure that this disappointment was collective. It was not only on Simon. And most of us are in the same situation. We think that we know how to live our lives, right? We, we know how to live our lives. I have lived in my life for 44 years. Let me say it again. See, 44. And uh, I know it's too short. I know, I know, but, you know, I, <laughs> I have been living my life for 44 years, and, and I think that I know what I'm doing, right? Like, for those that are parents, we know what we're doing, right? Maybe not with the first one. Poor Liz, she was the first one and the only one. So <laughs> I'm so sorry for you. <laughs> but, but for people that have more kids, right, who have more than one kid? I, mean, I think everybody here, right? Right? I usually, usually, well, you, you guys came, the, the both of you came in a package. So it, you guys are in the same boat with Liz. You came with company, but you still, you still, <laughs> you're still the first ones. Right, but when, when we have kids, usually with the first one, you kind of like make a lot of mistakes and stuff like that. And it's not when you grow older or when you have another one, that then you start saying like, you know what, you know. Have you guys seen the commercial with the babies, the, the, the first mom with, with a big, you know, diaper bag because she have everything but the, the, the kitchen sink in it. And then the second kid is like, okay, without shoes or anything, like, I don't know, you know. He says, mom, like, he's eating dirt. Oh, yes, that's good for him, <laughs> right? Right? And, and so, so we all live our lives, and we all find ourselves in the same situation, thinking that we know how to handle our life, our, our situations. But at the same time, we think we know. Right? And I said that we think we know because if we really know, if we really knew how to live our life, if we really knew how to handle our lives, then I wonder why we are so tired, so anxious, so angry, depressed, exhausted, discouraged. And not only that, why are so many of us at shore with our nets empty? You know, Simon probably knew more about fishing than Jesus that he was just a carpenter, right? But the only reason I can think why Peter or Simon actually answered and did what Jesus was asking, the only answer that I can think of is because he believed in Jesus. 
You know, when we let Jesus direct our work and direct our lives, it makes all the difference. You know, in my opinion, one of our problems and the problems that as humans we, humans we face is that, that we get comfortable very easily. You know, like some people come to church and, and you know, five minutes in my sermon, they start falling asleep because you guys get comfortable. <laughs> you know, we, we're comfortable with the status quo. We like things that the way they have always been. We, we like the things that, that, you know, they give us some kind of level of security. We are afraid of changes. We are afraid of the deep. We are afraid of uncharted waters. Why did I have to go so deep if I know this one's very well, right? Why do I have to change? Why do I have to act different? Why the pastor is always asking me to do stuff that makes me uncomfortable because I am comfortable, where I am. And I'm not talking about taking risks, risks that, that are like dangerous for us, that will harm us or others. But some of us, some of us eat the same food all the time. Some of us go out to a restaurant and we order the same thing all the time. Like Liz. Liz have, like, every, everywhere we go, there's two, two menus. You know, it's just chicken fingers and french fries. That's, that's it. Like, this, there's only two things in the menu that she likes all the time. And when she was little, I would always say, Liz, but try something different. You know, like, like, ask for the chicken fingers and the french fries. But add something different, something new. So now she likes uh, tacos. So that's good. <laughs> I don't think that that's working out for the convery. But... Uh, <laughs> You know, some people hang out with the same people all the time. And it's not bad to hang out with people. I have friends that I have friends for years. But sometimes people don't want to meet other people. They don't feel the need of, of reaching out. Or, 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 you know, sometimes people even in church, we sit kind of like in the same space. And sometimes you never talk or know the person that is on the other side. Because, you know, we're quite uncomfortable with my, you know, with my crew here. Everybody knows me. If I'm snoring, they kind of like nudge me a little so I can wake up and the pastor don't say anything, right? Sometimes when we pray, we pray the same way at the same time and for the same things all the time. Sometimes when we worship, we worship the same way. We worship at the same time, Sundays at 1030. When we can do things different, right? Right? Sometimes when people read the scripture or study the scripture, they only, they only like to go to the places that they know that it's a good thing for us, right? We all like, we all like that, those, those pieces of, of the scripture that have promises and love and grace. And nobody want to hear the other side, right? Like you know, the commandments, the stuff that we need to do when God and Jesus call us to go deep into the water. We don't like change. We reject anything that is new or unfamiliar, and we avoid conflict and difficult conversations at all costs. At all costs. If we are mad with somebody, we prefer stop talking to that person because we don't want to go to that person and say, Hey, Vince, you know what? You know, when you look at me that way this morning, I felt like, like you were mad at me. You know, but because I don't want to have that conversation, then I see... You know, uh, Vince coming this way, and I'm like, let me get out of that way because I don't want to see Vince again. I don't want, I don't want Vince looking at me the, the same way that I don't like anyway. And, and Vince, yeah, <laughs> and Vince probably is not even aware of anything that is going on in my head. But this is what we do, right? This is what we do because we don't like to confront something different. Some we, we don't, we're not risky people. We're not risky people. When we serve, we tend to do the same things that we know that we can handle. You know, so some, sometimes, I, and I'm, I'm not talking about anybody here. Like, no, no, I'm, I'm not pointing out fingers. I just want to uh, say just, just an example. But, you know, like, no, a, a new pastor comes in and I say, hi, and what do you do for this? Oh, I have been doing craft for 35 years awesome. Have you tried something different too? Like just to see if uh, 
you know, we can stretch out a little our gifts and talents. It is not bad to do the same things. But what is bad is just stay in the same place all the time. When the opportunity to serve as a full-time pastor arrives, I know that you probably think, well, the pastor is a little crazy. And I know that she jumped in right away without thinking. Eh, no. When the opportunity came and I received that call, it was decision-making time for me. And I started like, like you know, like, like, like Simon and like everybody else. I started to kind of like measure the risk. Should I leave my job? That is the main source of income that I have. Should I take that pay cut? Should, should, should this be the time where should I change my health insurance and my benefits at this stage of my life? Should I kind of like start something fully again? Would I be able to live up to the responsibilities, demands, and expectation of this new congregation? God, am I the right person for this? Should I take the risk? And as I was praying, I heard the same words that Jesus told Simon in this scripture. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Yes, I get it. I understand. Jesus has a different method to do things. And yes, most of the time when he asks us to do something, it's something that it's out of our comfort zone. But I wanted to tell you something this morning. When Jesus asks you to get out of your comfort zone, he's not saying that it's out of his control. It's only out of our comfort zone. You know, and we see this in the scripture when we see uh, Simon saying, Master, we have worked hard all night and have caught anything. But because you said so, I will let down my nets. Jesus, because you said so. Jesus, because you said so, I say yes. Jesus, because you said so, I say I'll go. Most theologians call this an act of obedience. But I will also add that this was an act of faith from Simon. You know, act of faith that not only proved that he believed in Jesus, but also opened the door for a miracle. You know, you know, this is not the first time that Simon met Jesus. If you read in, uh, in the Gospel of Luke in chapter 4, you'll see that um, Simon's uh, mother-in-law was sick and Jesus went to the house and, and he healed her. So, so Simon knows that Jesus has the power to do great things. Simon knows that Jesus, that Jesus has the power to do miracles in the name of God. And his presence gives him confidence to him and the others in the boat to go out again. And my question to you this morning is, who is in your boat? Who is in your boat with you? When the opportunity arrives and when challenges arrive and when decision-making time is it's, it's, it's it's present and it's in front of you, when, when life-changing situations come, who is in the boat with you? Who is giving you comfort? Who is giving you strength? Who is telling you, don't be afraid? Jesus, I will put my nets down because you said so. Because you said, let there be light, and there was light. Amen? Because you said to the sun and to the moon and to the stars and to the planet, be created, and everything was created. 
because you said so, life came to all of us. Because you said so, creation is together and sustained by your hand, by your mighty hand, God, because you said so. And then, and then the unexpected happened. They went out, they went to the deep waters with Jesus, they throw the nets, and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, they feel the fish is coming. And they start pulling the nets, and the nets are breaking, and the boat is sinking, and they have to call more people because this cot is too big and too great and too amazing for them to do it by themselves. So they call another boat, and the other boat comes to help. And what happened to the other boat? The other boat also is full, and it starts to sink. Because when God does something in your life, it's until it overflows. Because when Jesus called you for deep waters, it's because he have a miracle in mind. It's because he's doing something. And the only thing that you need to do is to trust in God. You know, in, 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 in my opinion, this was not only a message of abundance, and provision, but to me, it was like a prophetic message of the future. You see, it's like it was like Jesus was telling them what was coming to their lives. If they were not afraid to take the risk, you know, these men will will not be be fishing uh, for fish anymore. But they will discover a new vocation. They will discover a new calling. They will discover a new purpose. Simon Peter didn't know at that time that three years later, he will be preaching after receiving the Holy Spirit in Pentecost Day. And more than 3,000 people will be saved because he believed and because he obeyed. You know... But sometimes we look ourselves when we are in the presence of Jesus and we realize our condition, our human condition, our sins, our imperfections. But Jesus called Simon as he was. He told him not to be afraid and called him to a new mission. The need of the people does not wait until we think that we are all ready. The needs of this world are not in pause, waiting for the church to be ready to go out. The need in this world, the need of the people is too great. And Jesus is calling us to take the risk and not to be Christians from the shallow waters, but to go to the deep. We are not only... We're not only Christians from the shallow waters. We are called to be fish, fishers of people. We're called to go and reach out to those that are in the deep sea, in the deep water, in the deep darkness, and bring them out to life, to a life in Jesus. He wants us to go all in. He wants us to be all in. Because Jesus said so, we should go. Because Jesus is calling us, because Jesus is saying, I want to bless you. I want to go deeper in a relation with you. I want to spend more time with you. And because he said so, we should do it because we know that it's a blessing to come. There is a miracle to witness. There is something that God is giving us all the tools in order for us to use them for his glory. You know, Jesus is calling us back into the boat. Jesus is calling us back into the boat to live our lives. But this time he wants us to live our lives with him in the boat. And he wants us to go to deep waters. And he wants us to put and lay out our nets so we can witness a miracle. And a, more, a miracle of an abundant blessing that is awaiting for you and for me. Because God not only wants to provide 
for our today and maybe tomorrow, but God's provision is eternal. God's provision is eternal. I, w- I want you I want you right now to think on a problem or a situation that you have, something that is going on in your life, a, a decision that you have to make, a challenge that you have in front of you right now. And I want you to think about the, the risk that God is calling you to take. And I want you to think about the pros and cons. And now I want you to say, Jesus, because you said so, I will do it. Jesus, because you said so, I will go. Jesus, because you said so, I will trust. Jesus, because you said so, I will love. Jesus, because you said so, I will serve. Jesus, because you said so, I will worship. Jesus, because you said so, I will give my life to you. I will surrender everything I am to you. Because I know that at the end of the day, a blessing is awaiting for me. Don't be afraid. Amen. You know, sometimes sometimes it's difficult when someone talks about risks, when we talk about change in church, right, the, the C word, nobody wants to change, do something drastic, do something different. Sometimes it makes us feel uncomfortable. Sometimes it makes us feel insecure, uneasy. But you know what? God went all in for you and for me. Because God being God, being our creator, he understood the separation, the sin, have created between us and him. And it was not enough for God just to say, I love you. He showed us. He sent sent his one and only son to this earth to die on a cross for you and for me, to prove his love. So we have a tangible example of his love. So we have something that we can say, yes, God really cares and God loves me. And because Jesus died and was resurrected, now we have a relationship with God. And not only that, we have blessings and we have promises that only belong to the ones who believe in his son, Jesus Christ. Amen? You guys are too quiet for me. I don't know what's going on. You see, God gave Simon tools for his work. He had a boat and he had his nets. And God gave me tools for my work. I have a financial background and my sense of humor. Hey, we talk about that. (laughs) And God has provided and gifted you with things too that you can use. So this table is not only for us to participate, but all can participate in it. This banquet has been prepared by Jesus for us, for our spiritual well-being, for our spiritual nourishment. And today we celebrate the Holy Communion. And we remember that day when Jesus 
give himself for us. When Jesus was called to deep waters, and he did it without thinking about it twice. So when we come today to the table, I will ask you to come with trust in your heart. We trust that whatever God is asking you to do, he will bless you, and you will witness a miracle for his glory. But before, like Simon, we have to be confronted with our humanity and our sins. Let us pray together. The uh, prayer is on the screen. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with all your heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled your law. We have not loved your neighbor. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Here is the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proved God's love for all of us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. You know, in the Methodist Church, the table is open. The only requirement is that we believe that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior, and we have, uh, we're able to participate of this amazing table that he himself has prepared for us. On the night that he gave himself for us, he took the bread. Oh, I forgot um, the hand sanitizer. <laughs> he took the bread. He took the hand sanitizer first. You know, like if, if, if Jesus was in these times, he would have to, like, right, use hand sanitizer too. Maybe he didn't have to use it for him, but maybe for the, for the well-being of us, right? He will do it for us, I'm sure. So, on the night... <laughs> That he gave himself for us. He took the bread. Give thanks. And gave it to the disciples and said, Take it. This is my body, which is given for you for the forgiveness of sins. After the meal was over, he took the cup. And give thanks and give it to the disciples and says, drink from this, all of you. All of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is given for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this and remember me. And now I'm going to ask the band to come forward first. Dennis, Dennis is my assistant. And then Pete is going to lead us um, on our way um, to the table.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you because you call us to the deep waters to bless us. Thank you because in the moments where we're facing decisions, you are in the boat with us to help us feel confident. Thank you because when we trust in you, miracles happen. Amen. And now go to the deep waters, knowing that you have already been equipped by God, that you have been called by the one that can stop the storm with his word. And you are empowered by the Holy Spirit to go out and fish for people. And the people of God say, amen. 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 See you next week here or online. Stay safe. Be blessed. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, your perfect love is casting out fear. And even when I'm caught in the middle, of the storms of this life I won't turn back I know you are near And I will fear no For my God is with me And if my God is with me Who then shall I
Yeah. 